today I'm in London. I'm going to be visiting some locations associated with the singer and actress Judy Garland. Judy Garland had been a frequent visitor to London throughout her career. Uh, she was living in the Belgravia area of the city when she died in 1969. At the end of this video I'm going to be visiting the location where she died. I've got the Royal Albert Hall in front of me. I'll show you the Albert Memorial in a second. You'll remember this hall from the finale of The Man Who Knew Too Much, the Alfred Hitchcock film starring Jimmy Stewart and Doris Day. Just across the road from the hall is the Albert Memorial. A very low-key memorial. I'll just show you. Nothing to do with Judy Garland, but I just thought I'd show you. The establishing shot of the hall in the film The Man Who Knew Too Much was taken from this angle here. The first location all of this is, is actually pretty close to the hall. This is the Gore Hotel in Kensington. It's pretty much just behind the Albert Hall. It's believed to have been Judy Garland's favourite hotel in London. And they've even got a Judy Garland suite here. I don't know if that suite is the actual suite that she used to stay in or not. Another notable guest who used to stay here was Queen Victoria. In 1968, the Rolling Stones used the hotel to launch their album, Becker's Banquet. In 1963, Judy Garland was in London to shoot the film I Could Go On Singing. This turned out to be a final big screen role. Some scenes from the film were shot here at the London Palladium. Despite career highs in the 1940s and 1950s, including her popular remake of A Star Is Born, her many addictions and health issues had taken their toll by the late 1960s. Due to mismanagement and possible embezzlement, her wealth was gone and she owed hundreds of thousands of pounds to the IRS. This is the Hippodrome Casino in the late 60s, it was called Talk of the Town. And this is the venue where Judy Garland held a series of concerts over a five week period in late 1968, only a few months before she died. She had previously seen success doing a series of concerts in the early 1950s in London, and she had hoped to reproduce that success. However, her performances here were inconsistent on some nights she would put on an incredible show, but on other nights she would turn a plate at the venue and would need a cocktail of pills for stage fright. There were also nights where she mocked audience members and was heckled in return. I'm now in the exclusive Belgravia area of London. This is where Judy Garland passed away in 1969. The house is right at the end of this lane, Cadogan Lane. She lived in probably the most modest house in this area. It was actually demolished a few years ago and there's a new building there now. But I'll show you the location. It's just down past that red post box there. Okay, this is the location of the house. It's got the grey garage door. 
I'll show you a photograph of how the house looked when she lived here. On the night that she died, she had been watching a documentary with the fifth husband. And I believe it was a documentary about the royal family. And for some reason that night, she had a heated argument with her husband. And she ran out into the street here. Her husband went to bed, just assuming that she'd return after a while. But um, when he woke up in the morning, there was still no sign of her. He tried the bathroom door and it was locked. Now I believe the bathroom must have been on the back of the building. And he climbed onto the roof to get in through the bathroom window. He discovered Gallant slumped on the toilet with her hands still holding up her head. Despite a history of multiple suicide attempts in the past, the coroner recorded a verdict of accidental self-overdosage of sleeping pills. Her body was flown back to New York City and an estimated 20,000 people viewed her body prior to the funeral. James Mason gave the eulogy at the funeral. When the original house was demolished and they were building this one, there was a plaque here for a short period of time. And there has been a campaign to try and get a blue plaque placed here, but um, whoever owns the house doesn't want that. Well, this is a photograph of her and her husband by the front door of the house. And as you can see by your feet there, there's a manhole. So you can see from this manhole here where the front door was located. It's probably not the same manhole, but it's in the same spot, obviously. In 2017, Judy Gallant's family decided to exhume her remains and move her to Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles. Judy Gallant died on June 22nd, 1969. She was 47 years of age. Okay guys, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video. The longer I waited, the more that I've tried, all the years that I've wasted, trying to find. Out the window, no smoke in my eyes. I can hear the wind chime. It's always been new in the back of my mind. Early blue morning, when everything. Covered in gold There's nothing else that Eases my soul I let it all go Out the window No smoke in my eyes I can hear the wind 
It's always 